Few scientific stories carry the tragic romance of a skeleton given a name, celebrated as the dawn of modern humanity in Europe, only to be consumed by fire, scattered across continents, and then, decades later, resurrected from the ruins. The Com Capel skeleton, once hailed as Homo aurignaciensis hauseri, promised to embody Europe's earliest modern human. Its supposed antiquity, over 30,000 years, made it a keystone for theories about the aurignation culture, the first wave of Homo sapiens sweeping across Paleolithic Europe. It is a tale of scientific ambition, commercial exploitation, wartime tragedy, and finally methodological redemption. At its center stands a skeleton found in 1909, whose journey from grave to museum to ashes and back again reveals as much about the evolution of archaeology as it does about human evolution itself. On August 26, 1909, a laborer employed by Otto Hauser, a Swiss antiquities dealer, uncovered a human skull in the Dordogne Valley of southwestern France at Roc de Combe Capelle. Hauser himself was absent, but he quickly recognized the importance of the discovery and orchestrated its excavation. Assisted by anthropologist Hermann Klatsch, Hauser documented the burial through photographs, rare for the time, which showed the skeleton laid on its right side in a flexed position, its head oriented northeast-southwest. The individual was estimated to be a man of forty to fifty years. The grave was striking not only for the body, but for its adornments. Around the skull were sixteen perforated mollusk shells, interpreted as beads or pendants, along with stone tools. To Hauser and Clutch, these grave goods pointed to great antiquity. They argued that the skeleton belonged to the lowermost aurignation layer, then considered the hallmark of Europe's earliest modern humans. The find was quickly christened Homo aurignaciensis hauseri, in honor of its discoverer and its supposed cultural context. This bold naming implied not just a burial, but an entirely new species, or at least a distinct human form, connected directly to the birth of the Upper Paleolithic. Hauser was no ordinary archaeologist. A dealer in antiquities, he had already courted controversy for selling Dordogne artifacts to German institutions. French scholars accused him of plundering national heritage. Yet his finds, often genuine and spectacular, gave him clout. By 1910 he was marketing Combe Capelle alongside another sensational discovery, the Le Moustier Neanderthal Youth, exhumed in 1908. Hauser's ambitions were as financial as they were scientific. He offered the pair, the Aurignacian man of Comte Capelle and the Neanderthal of Le Moustier, to Berlin for the princely sum of 160,000 goldmark. Kaiser Wilhelm himself helped fund the purchase, ensuring that these skeletons became jewels of the Berlin Museum. From the outset, French prehistorians like Denis Peroni doubted the stratigraphy and context Hauser claimed. Yet the sheer drama of the find, an adult modern human buried with ornaments in an aurignation layer, captured imaginations across Europe. Combe Capelle entered textbooks as the first modern European. For three decades, the Combe Capelle skeleton stood on display in Berlin, an anthropological treasure paired with the Le Moustier youth. But the Second World War brought devastation. On February 3, 1945, Allied bombing ignited the Martin Gropius building housing the collections. The fire consumed countless artifacts. In its aftermath, the postcranial remains of both skeletons were declared destroyed. Only the skulls, stored elsewhere, survived, but their fate was no less dramatic. In the war's final months, the Red Army seized cultural treasures from Berlin. The Com Capel skull vanished into Soviet collections, seemingly lost forever. For decades, textbooks mourned the skeleton as lost to science. The Com Capel race, once heralded as the precursor to Cro-Magnons, became a ghost of prehistory, destroyed by war, surviving only in Hauser's photographs and moulds. Almut Hoffmann, a curator in Berlin, recently re-identified the Combe Capel skull among artefacts quietly returned from the Soviet Union to East Germany in 1958. Unlabeled and forgotten, the fragments had languished in storage for decades. Their rediscovery was electrifying a chance to test the old claims with modern science. Yet expectations were tempered. 
Even before the war, critics had questioned the skeleton's placement in Aurignacian layers. Stratigraphy at Roc de Combe Capelle was confused, and Peyroni had already argued that the burial might not belong to the Aurignacian at all. What had once seemed a triumph of evidence now looked suspiciously like wishful thinking. The decisive moment came when researchers extracted collagen from a molar of the Combe Capelle skull. Using accelerator mass spectrometry at the Leibniz Laboratory in Kiel, they obtained three consistent radiocarbon dates around 9,561 years old. Calibrated, this placed the burial deep in the boreal phase of the early Holocene. The result was stunning. Far from a Paleolithic burial over 30,000 years old, Combe Capelle was Mesolithic, roughly 9,500 years ago. Its ornaments of mollusk shells and its flexed burial position now aligned not with Aurignacian Cro-Magnons, but with Mesolithic traditions like those in eastern France. The name Homo aurignaciensis hauseri collapsed overnight. What had been a new species became simply another Mesolithic Homo sapiens, a man of modest height buried with shell ornaments, a twin-edged tool, and perhaps a cloth shroud. Even stripped of its mythical antiquity, the Combe Capelle burial remains remarkable. The grave goods, a necklace of perforated shells, stone blades and signs of clothing, testify to ritual care. Mesolithic Europe, often imagined as a simple hunter-gatherer world of fishing and hazelnut gathering, here reveals a symbolic depth. The mollusk shells, likely strung as a cap or necklace, echo ornaments from other boreal burials. The flexed burial position, body turned to the right, mirrors patterns found across early Holocene Europe. This suggests shared beliefs in death rituals and perhaps in the journey of the soul. Far from the heroic first modern European of Aurignacian fame such as Cro-Magnon, Combe Capelle's man emerges as part of a quieter, more localised story. The cultural flowering of Mesolithic hunter-gatherers adapting to forests, rivers and new climates after the Ice Age. The collapse of Homo aurignaciensis hauseri reshaped how prehistorians view Europe's Upper Paleolithic. If Com Capel was not Aurignacian, then the association of modern human burials with Chattel Peronian layers became even more tenuous. Indeed, the Chattel Peronian, once linked to modern humans, was confirmed instead as a Neanderthal culture. No unequivocal modern human burials are known in Europe before the Middle Upper Paleolithic. The earliest indisputable anatomically modern Europeans remain those from Mladek in the Czech Republic, 35,000 years old, and Oasi in Romania, 40,000 years old. Thus, the skeleton once thought to bridge Neanderthals and modern humans at the dawn of the Aurignacian turned out instead to belong to a far later world. Rather than clarifying the meeting of species, Com Capel underscored how fragile such associations could be. The Com Capel saga illustrates the perils of premature classification. Enthusiasm, commercial interest, and nationalist pride all propelled Hauser's discovery into a new species before evidence could justify it. The name Homo aurignaciensis hauseri was less a biological reality than a symbol of German museums' ambition, of Hauser's marketing genius and of a scientific community eager for origins. Its fiery near-destruction and improbable rediscovery highlight another truth, the material fragility of science's archive. Fossils are not just data points, but vulnerable objects, subject to war, theft, and neglect. The Com Capel Skull's Odyssey, from Dordogne to Berlin to Moscow and back, reads like a novel of survival. Finally, the redating shows the power of modern techniques. What took a century of speculation collapsed under the precision of AMS radiocarbon dating. Where stratigraphy and ornament once misled, collagen molecules in a tooth revealed the truth. So who was the Com Capel man, stripped of his own species name? He was not the prototype of Europe's first modern humans, but a Mesolithic hunter buried with care about 9,500 years ago. His people lived in warming forests, hunting deer, fishing rivers, and gathering hazelnuts. They adorned their dead with shells and tools, weaving meaning into death as into life. The ashes of Berlin almost erased him, but against the odds his skull survived to be tested anew. In losing and regaining him, 
science gained more than a specimen, it gained humility. The story of Homo Orignaciensis Hauseri reminds us that human history is never linear, never simple, and that even the most celebrated firsts can vanish into smoke or re-emerge transformed. But what science built on fragile assumptions, war and new dating techniques, later tore down? The fossil that had anchored textbooks and exhibitions as Europe's Aurignacian man turned out not to be Paleolithic at all, but a Mesolithic burial scarcely 9,500 years old. In the end, the Com Capel skeleton is both less and more than Hauser imagined. Less because it is not a Paleolithic pioneer. More because it reveals the resilience of knowledge, the intertwining of science and politics, and the enduring mystery of how humans have always honored their dead. Thank you for watching.